Photographer Tom Franklin wasn't even supposed to be at work that day. After getting home from a baseball assignment in the Dominican Republic, he stopped by the office of the Bergen Record to talk to his editor. They were discussing the assignment when someone burst into the room saying that a plane had hit one of the twin towers at the World Trade Center. They were on the fourth floor so they could clearly see the World Trade Center from the office. Sure enough, there was a gaping hole in one of the towers. Franklin grabbed his gear and ran down to the car. As they headed down to the New Jersey Turnpike, they heard about the crash of United Flight 175 on the radio. Stopping off at Exchange Place in New Jersey by the riverfront, he witnessed ferries carrying wounded persons in the beginnings of the triage areas. Franklin felt it was his duty to record history that day. He had been a photojournalist with the Bergen Record since 1993, and was first inspired to take up photojournalism after seeing Frank Fournier's photo of a girl drowning in a mudslide. Quote, the whole day was an emotional roller coaster, he said. I was scanning the faces in New Jersey hoping I would see my brother. He works two blocks south of the World Trade Center. Cell service was spotty at best, but Franklin found a phone and called into the office. He was told to get into Manhattan if he could. On his way, he ran into a freelance photographer who had worked for the record named John Wheeler. Wheeler knew a police officer in New Jersey managed to secure them passage on a tugboat into Manhattan. But back then, there were no smartphones, so there was very little information to go on. So, while on the boat ride over, he prepared himself for what he might see. By half past ten, both skyscrapers had collapsed. Fires burned and toxic ash filled the air in New York's financial district. No one knew yet how many casualties there would be. Dan McWilliams, a firefighter with Brooklyn's Ladder 157, was walking the North Cove Marina. This would be just a block from where the towers stood. He spotted an American flag on a yacht and took it. Enlisting the help of fellow firefighters George Johnson, also of Ladder 157, and Bill Eisengrain of Rescue 2, they carried the flag to the southeast corner of the wreckage. This would later be dubbed Ground Zero. They spotted a flagpole jutting out of a tall hill of debris and took down a faded green flag that was already on it, replacing it with the U.S. one. The flagpole is thought to have been from a Marriott hotel situated just next to the World Trade Center. It was now nearing 5 p.m. and Franklin was running out of digital space on his camera, forced to repeatedly delete images to make room for more. He was also down to only one camera after being run into by a police officer resulting in his camera smashing into a lamppost. It was while he was taking a break and making room on his camera that he noticed the three firefighters messing with the flagpole. At first, Franklin didn't know what they were doing, but he knew it seemed significant. He moved into position and observed what they were doing. Then, very quickly, in a short burst, they raised the flag and Franklin fired off a short burst of shots. Within seconds, the flag was raised high enough for rescue workers to see it from the Valley of Debris below. One of the resulting images Franklin took would become one of the most widely recognized photos in American history. With a day's worth of pictures and a looming deadline, Franklin made his way back to the river to talk his way onto a boat out of Manhattan. But he wasn't the only photographer to capture this image that day. Two other photographers were in the area at the time, but were at higher angles. Lori Grinker, on assignment with People Magazine, and Ricky Flores of the Journal News were also on scene. When Franklin got back to Exchange Place, he got his laptop and set up shop in a nearby hotel lobby to transmit the photos to his editor. It was only after he was able to sit down for the first time and go over his photos that he realized what he managed to capture was eerily similar to Joe Rosenthal's photograph of raising the flag at Iwo Jima. Once the photo was published the following day, the record was inundated with calls and requests looking to license and republish it. This went on for months. What not a lot of people know is that soon after that flag was raised, it disappeared. The city of New York thought they had possession of it, but it turns out the one they had was smaller. The military mistakenly took the flag that they believed to be the one in the photo and flew it aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. The real flag was finally recovered once following a lead after the airing of the History Channel's Brad Meltzer's Lost History in 2014. 
scientists have verified that indeed it is the correct flag. It's now on display at the 9-11 Memorial Museum. Dan McWilliams remembers every pair of eyes that saw that flag got a little brighter. In all, 343 firefighters died in the Trade Center disaster, along with 23 New York City and 37 Port Authority police officers and six medical rescue workers. Franklin said that they had over 300 people in their readership area die that day. So it came to a point where they stopped giving out free use of the photo to other publications and set up a disaster fund. They asked for donations in order to license and reprint the photo and raised over $400,000 to charities selected by McWilliams, Johnson, and Eisengrain. At the time he snapped that photo, Franklin had no idea what it would lead to. It even landed him a spot as a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize in 2002. The picture would go on to be a postage stamp, adorn posters, murals, become tattoos, and so on. A statue was even designed, but it stirred up quite the controversy. Instead of accurately depicting the firefighters involved in the flag raising, it was proposed to race swap the individuals making the firefighters out to be white, black, and Latino. The three original men were all Caucasian. The argument was that those who died were of all races and ethnicities, but the majority of the complaints rolling in were saying that it was a rewriting of history in an effort to be politically correct. So they went back to the drawing board and the statue was never finished. When recounting some of the positive aspects that came out of that horrific day, Franklin said, One of the other truly beautiful things that happened in the wake of 9-11 was the feeling of kindness and unity that pervaded in the country. Many set aside political difference and it really felt like we stood united as a country. As Americans spontaneously displayed the U.S. flag in a surge of patriotism. But our brief period of national unity eroded and now has given way to deep division driven by politics and party loyalty. One can't help but wonder, what happened?